In this session, we will discuss the hierarchy described by Chomsky. Chomsky hierarchy describes the relationship between different type of machines known as DFA, NFA, deterministic PDA, non-deterministic PDA, linear bounded automata, and Turing machine, and various type of grammars. Let's start the session. So we have four type of language: type three language, which can be described by regular grammar. DFA or NFA. We have type two languages that can be described by context-free grammar, deterministic PDA, and non-deterministic PDA. We have type one language corresponding to which we can able to design context-sensitive grammar, and we can able to design linear bounded automata. And the last one is type zero languages corresponding to which we can able to write down recursively enumerable grammar. And we can able to design Turing machine. So we have type three language, which is the least powerful. And corresponding to type three language, we can able to design regular grammar. We can able to write down regular expression. We can able to design NFA, as well as we can able to design DFA. The next type of language is type two language. We will also call it as Context-free languages. Corresponding to it, we can able to write down CFG, that is context-free grammar, and we can able to design deterministic PDA as well as non-deterministic PDA. But non-deterministic PDA is more powerful as compared to deterministic PDA. So we can able to design deterministic PDA, and we can able to design non-deterministic PDA. If we will consider the language L. Is A N B N. It is a context-free language. We can able to design deterministic PDA for it, but we cannot able to design regular grammar for it. We can have language A N B N, which is context-free, but not a regular language. Similarly, we have another language L A S, odd palindrome over A N B. We can able to design non-deterministic PDA for it. And we cannot able to design deterministic PDA for it. So non-deterministic PDA is more powerful. So we can call it as it can be further divided into two parts. One is corresponding to which we can able to design deterministic PDA, and one is corresponding to that we can able to design non-deterministic PDA. The next type of language is type one language. Corresponding to it, we can able to design context-sensitive grammar. And we can able to design linear bounded automata corresponding to type one languages. Last one is type zero. Corresponding to it, we can able to design Turing machine, and we can able to write down recursively enumerable grammars or unrestricted grammar. We can call it as every language of type I is by default. Of type I minus one, what it means if we have any regular language that is by default that is context-free language, that is context-sensitive language as well as recursively enumerable language, or we can say every context-free language is by default a context-sensitive language. Now we will discuss what is the meaning of linear bounded automata. A linear bounded automata, that is LBA, can be defined as a non-deterministic Turing machine, which only uses the input tape space C1 multiplied by length of the string W. Suppose we have C1 as one, so we have the W as A A B B. So we have the left and right marker. That is denoting the left marker of the input tape and right marker of the input tape. We cannot able to read this left marker as well as the right marker. We have to only utilize this much space for processing of linear bounded automata. So linear bounded automata is acting as a Turing machine, but we have the foundation of the space. That is given by C1 multiply length of input tape. Now we will discuss what are 
various kind of restriction on different type of grammars. So initially we have type 3 language or regular language. We are defining regular grammar corresponding to it and regular grammar can be classified as left linear or right linear grammar. Linear means maximum one non-terminal is allowed in the right hand side of a production rule. If it is extreme left, then we are calling it as left linear. If that single non-terminal appear in the rightmost position in all production rule, then we will call it as right linear grammar. In the left hand side of all production rules, only one non-terminal is allowed. For example, suppose we want to design right linear grammar that is starting with A and ending with B. So we can design it as S will give you A A. Only one A we want to generate and then using the capital A we want to generate a number of A and B. So we will generate it by A A, B A or B. We will call these kind of rules as right linear. Because in the right hand direction maximum one non-terminal is presenting and that non-terminal is appearing at the extreme right position. In the left hand side only a single non-terminal is allowed. If we want to design left linear grammar we can design it as like this one. We will generate the first symbol as B. So A, B and using A we will generate a number of A and B. So A, A. A, B and it is replaced by A or terminated by A. So again maximum one non-terminal is allowed in the right hand side and that is appearing at extreme left position and in the left hand side only a single non-terminal is allowed. Now consider the production rule S will give you A, A, A will give you S, B and S can give you null also. It represents the language L is A N B N and which is a context free language. This is not a left linear or right linear language because in this production rule A is appearing at extreme right position. In this production S is appearing at extreme left position. So these production rule are neither left linear nor right linear. So this is not a regular grammar. For a grammar to be regular it is either left linear or it is right linear. Now we will discuss context free grammar. In a context free grammar, only one non terminal is allowed in left hand side of every production rule. There is no restriction in the right hand side. So it will be of the form A will give you alpha and alpha is any string over terminal and non terminal. So the given grammar is a context free grammar. Because in the left hand side we have only a single non terminal, in the right hand side we have no restriction. In context sensitive grammar, we can have any combination of terminal and non terminal in the left as well as in the right hand side. But the length of alpha must be less than or equal to length of beta. What it means, we have these kind of rules because length of left hand side is 2, the length of right, right hand side is also 2 but we cannot allow these kind of rules because length of alpha in the left hand side is 3, length of beta in the right hand side is 2. We can have any number of terminal and non-terminal in the left as well as in the right hand direction but the condition must be satisfied that the length of alpha is less than or equal to length of beta. Now we will discuss the case of recursive enumerable grammar. It is also known as type 0 grammar and in type 0 grammar we have no restriction on alpha and beta. Only one point we should note that alpha must contain at least one non-terminal. In the next session we will discuss few example for identifying the type of grammars. Thanks for watching this session.